guys, Play Smart here, back with another video. Today's gonna be a quick one. I've been working with some players and a common theme that I see from different students is that they think that both players, whether you're a 90 VPIP recreational or you're one of the better aggressive regulars in their games, they seem to think that those players' ranges are unexploitable or that they're too difficult to counter. The aggressive recreationals are too difficult because they play too erratic and maniacal and you can never get a read on their range. And then the regulars' ranges are impossible to combat because their ranges are too well-constructed and they don't have as many imbalances in their game. And so what I decided to do was pull up a hand that is against the best player who's ever done it in No Limit Hold'em, certainly the best player in the world at the time when this hand was played, which is 2015. This was a six max table that we were probably just starting the game, me and OTB Red Baron, the legend himself. And I wanted to put this hand in because I wanted to show you guys that if the absolute best player in the world at the time has an imbalanced range where he, in reality, is going to be massively over bluffing a certain node, then I want you to ask yourself if you think that the 200 zoom regular who gives you trouble is going to have imbalanced ranges that you can exploit. This hand is by no means saying that I'm a better player or was a better player than OTB Red Baron. The reason why I'm putting this hand up is just to show you that, you know, even a god can bleed. And so it's very important that we give ourselves the confidence and we allow ourselves to take away those mental shackles against certain players when we're playing against them in pots against them. And we tell ourselves the truth, which is that every single player that you have ever played and will ever play in poker will always have imbalanced ranges across the game tree. Some of their ranges are going to be too strong and they're going to be under bluffing. Some of their ranges are going to be too weak and they're going to be over bluffing. And so you guys need to recognize that those leaks exist everywhere and they, they exist in your game, they exist in my game. And the better you play, the less leaks exist. And it's your job to be as perspicacious as you can at the tables and find those holes, guys. And we open the button with Jack-7 offsuit. Big blind calls. Right away, it's important, no matter who you're playing or the stakes, that we use our frameworks to break down our opponent's ranges on every street in every hand. That's always the most important thing in poker for me. So right away we look at this flop and we realize that the button has a huge equity and range advantage. The reason is that the big blind is going to three bet a ton of hands that connect with this board, such as the big blind is never going to have 10-9 suited, king-10 suited, ace-king offsuit, king-queen suited, king-queen offsuit, pocket nines, pocket tens, pocket queens, queen-jack suited, 7-8 suited, jack-8 suited is going to be discounted. Uh, so very large equity advantage for me as the button. OTB checks. I go for a large c-bet. Totally fine. My hand can get into fold a bunch of better hands, such as low pocket pairs, uh, maybe a week nine or ace highs. Right away, my opponent goes for a check raise. And it's very important to be range aware. And so I remember thinking in this hand that my opponent is representing a pretty narrow value range for this line right away because he's already discounted a ton of the value combinations from preflop action. And then you need to consider that when he does have a king or even a hand as strong as two pair, like bottom two, 10-9, it's pretty unlikely that he's going to check raise the spot with those hands as 
I've chosen a polarized sizing on the flop on a board where he has a very weak range. And so he's likely going to want to put those hands into the calling range so that he is not susceptible to me barreling him relentlessly. So I think that the bottom of his check raising range on the flop could probably be a hand like king nine. That said, I think that it's very likely that OTB was imbalanced here and he was playing a strategy where he was going to check call a lot of those hands, the king nine offsuit, the king 10 offsuits, because like I said before, he wants to have those strong hands in his barreling range. And when I choose a polarizing sizing like this, I'm going to have hands like ace five of hearts, or I'm going to have a hand like queen six of diamonds. So hands that don't have that much equity against his hand. And I think that he understands would serve him better if he put those hands into the calling line. So I decide that he is going to be too weighted towards bluffs in this spot. So I use my jack blocker, blocking the queen jack and having the seven for the double gut shot when I do run into the two pair region of his range and I go for a flop three bet. What this is going to do is it's going to put a lot of pressure on him when he has hands that are slightly better than mine, but still weak hands, hands like queen eight of diamonds, hands like jack eight offsuit. And if he was check raising with a hand like king nine or king 10, it's possible that I could get him to probably not fold king 10, but it's plausible I could fold him, I could get him to fold king nine if I barrel the turn and river as he understands that for this line, once I've polarized the flop and then three bet the flop against his polarizing small check raise, that the bottom of my value range that I'm representing, I would say would be pocket nines, maybe king 10 offsuit. So given all that, oh, I guess I'll wait for my opponent. He decides to make a, another re-raise, like a four bet. And this is where I really thought that he was going to be super imbalanced because he's able to flop check raise me with some of the two fair hands, like the king nine and king 10 specifically. However, once I three bet his flop check raise, the fact that I'm representing king 10 as the worst hand that I could have here, when he re-raises here, the worst, he's basically only representing queen jack. And from pre-flop, my opponent never has queen jack suited. And then he's also been a three bet queen jack offsuit at a frequency. So this was a spot where I just understood that even though I'm playing against the best player in the world, it's also important to note that I think that of the discounted queen jack combos he does have in this spot, that facing my flop three bet, he's going to call with maybe in reality all of them, but certainly at least 80 plus percent of them because he understands at this point how polarizing my range is. And when he actually has the nuts, the queen jack here, he wants me to continue bluffing when I have a hand like I have. So that even further discounts him having the queen jack. This is a situation where he's likely very imbalanced with this range because it's way too easy for him to have a hand like Jack deuce of spades, you know, Jack four, Jack five, Jack six, all those Jack X with, with the uh, back door flush draws, all the queen X with back door flush draws, seven, eight offsuit, Jack eight offsuit, way too many of those combos relative to him having what he's representing, which at this point is going to be queen Jack offsuit specifically. And I decide that using my jack blocker, blocking his nutted range that he is representing, that I'm going to jam my hand as a bluff. And the reason is that because I'm playing against such a strong player who 
the fact that he makes this play and he folds means that he was not only bluffing in this situation, but he also understood that my flop three bet is very polarizing and likely contained too many bluffs myself, which in reality, he might be right. Because if I'm playing this hand and I have different parts of my value range, such as let's say I have a hand like pocket Kings or queen Jack, which is the best hand that I can have here, a decent amount of those hands from the buttons perspective are going to just call his flop check raise and look to trap. So I decide that I'm going to jam my hand because it would be an absolute disaster if I was to just call his flop four bet and the turn was a brick and he jammed with his draw. So I need to make sure that I win when he has jack eight offsuit and he jams a brick turn, I can never call. Or when he has a hand like queen five of diamonds and he goes bet bet, I can never call. Or if he jams a diamond, I can never call. So this is a spot where I decide that I'm going to go with my hand. I think that his range is imbalanced and I'm using a great combo blocking the value portion of his range. And I end up going for it. We get the fold, which is awesome. And I think that it, it's really important to take those players off of their pedestals, especially when you're playing against them, whether it's the best player in the world, or if it's just an aggressive regular that you play often at the 200 games or your local live game who he seems to always have your number, or, you know, like your bluffs don't go through every time you call him, he's value betting. You need to take him off of his pedestal. He definitely has imbalanced ranges and it's your job to find them. Take care guys.